fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's danger on the trail ahead. A pitiless sun blazed down on the deserted plain. The withered grass seemed to shrivel in the sultry heat, and only two horsemen stirred in the prairie wastes. One of them wore a mask and sat astride a white stallion. The other was an Indian who rode a paint. Slowly, the Lone Ranger and Tonto guided their horses along the edge of a small stream. On their left rose a ledge 15 feet high. The Indian, constantly alert for signs, suddenly reached out and grasped the masked man. Wait, rein up. Oh, boy, who's got the Oh, someone on top of the ledge. Me see dust slide. In this deserted country? Uh, me take him. Uh, Indians! The Indians leaped down, landing on the shoulders of Lone Ranger and Tonto, dragging them from their horses. Taken by surprise, the two were at a disadvantage. Behind you, Tonto. Me get him! No, you don't, Redskin. Get back against wall. But that time... Fighting a dozen bloodthirsty Redskins, the Lone Ranger and Tonto fought with a solid wall of rock against their backs. Their fists lashed out time after time, smashing at the painted faces. Where one savage fell, two leaped into the fight to replace him. Knives gleamed, tomahawks rose and fell. We can't go on much longer. We make break. Look out! Tomahawk was about to split the masked man's skull. Silver leaped into the fray. Winning with rage, he struck out with powerful hoofs. First one, then another of the painted savages felt the smashing impact of the silver shod feet. Screaming with fear, they scattered before the stallion's fury. To the saddle, Tonto! Here, Scout! Take and smash that tomahawk! Let's go, Tonto! Come on, Silver! Get him up! Out! Oh, Silver. Oh, fella. Oh, fella. Why, why Apache in this part of country? I don't know, Tonto. They're not usually around here. Did they wound you? Oh, only scrape with knife. It's not bad. If there were a dozen of them, there are more. Tonto, we're going to get to the top of that hill and look at the valley beyond. We... That gunfire. Part way up that hill. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Scout. Bruised and battered from the fight against odds, the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced uphill toward the gunfire. By the time they arrived, the shooting had stopped. They found two men sprawled on the ground, victims of Indian arrows. Oh, Silver, oh boy, oh, no fella. Oh, take a look at that one. I'll examine this fella. Uh, Easy. Uh, there, there's no chance. No, I'm afraid not. This fellow's gone. Uh, this one dead too. 
These Apache arrows. Yeah, those savage fiends. Who are these fellows? I don't know, Kimasabe. They haven't been in the West long. Those clothes came from the East. Ah, uh, me see. Hello. These men look like advance scouts from a wagon train. Maybe the papers in this poor fellow's pocket will prove it. Maybe Apache's still around. Keep an eye out while I see what I can learn about these uh, men. Me watch. Maybe follow trail for a little way uphill. Now, wait a minute. I'll go with you. Um, what What you see on paper? They're pioneers. Came from the East. I'll learn more when I read the rest of the papers. Easy, Silver. <laughs> Let's look in the valley beyond the ridge. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Many miles east of the scene of death, a long line of canvas-covered prairie schooners threaded across the seemingly endless desert. In the first wagon, Ezra Thorne squinted into the distance. His rifle lay in readiness across his knees, and his grizzled old face was creased with worry as he scanned the horizon for hostile signs. Uh, every so often, I seem to see a cloud of dust. Have you notice it, Mary? Yes, I have, Ezra. I wondered about it. It's coming nearer to us. I think it might be Sam and Kit coming back? I hope to goodness it is. They've been gone since early morning. They should be back by this time. It's nearly sunset. Now, see it? The dust? Yes. But why do we see it, then not see it? It's the way the ground rolls. When the riders are in a dip, we can't see them. Uh, hey, Jake! Yeah, what is it? Right over here alongside my wagon. I want to ask you something. You see a couple of riders heading toward us? Yeah, me and the boys been watching them. Are they our boys coming back? Not unless they change horses. One of those horses is wet. You sure? Yep. Sam and Kit rode red ones. Yeah, you can see now. They're going to rise off yonder, you see me? Sure enough. Neither of those is a red horse. One's white and one's paint. Oh, Ezra, do you think something has happened to Sam and Kit? I don't know, Mary. I don't know. Come on, Sakes, how those two are traveling. Better call the train to a halt, Thorn. Want me to pass the word back? Yeah, yeah, Jake, you do that. Right up there. Right up. Pass the word. Oh, oh, Vance. Oh, Nelly. Pass oh. the word along. Ezra. Ezra, one of those is an engine. What's that, Mary? Oh, oh, there. Yeah, she's right. What's a redskin? Pass my shooting iron over here, Mary. Oh, Ezra, Let no. me handle this. Boys, right up alongside of me. What's the coming, Jake? Hey, a redskin and a masked man. Masked? Fence is right. Keep your guns handy. Be ready, boys. I don't like redskins. And a man with a mask is likely to be on the prod. Rain up there. Keep your distance. Hey, he can't hear you getting those hoof beats. Rain up. You hear me? Who are you? What do you want of us? We found two members of your train. Sakes alive. You hear that, Mary? Let me down from this wagon. Where'd you find them? They've been attacked by Indians. Was they riding reds? Chestnut horses? The Indians took their horses. One of the men was named Kit. I brought the letters I found in his pocket. Uh, he was killed? Yes. He was dead when we got there. The Indians had ridden away. That's a downright lie. Are you the leader of this train? Yes, I am. Said a big fella. <laughs> well, uh, turn these things over to you. Thank you. You look as if you'd had trouble, too. Yes. Hold on, I met some Apaches. Hold on, Thorne. <laughs> Let me deal with that hombre. Uh, Apaches, you say? There's a camp of about 50 of them. I'll handle this. You're lying, stranger. That's the second time you said that. Don't say it again. Why shouldn't I? Now, hold on, Jake. I'm the leader of this... You heard me as your guide. Let me take care of this. I know this country and the breed of critter that lives here. Take a look at that hombre with his clothes torn. The redskin with a loon on the shoulder. Kitten Sam marked him that way. One minute. I'll talk if I want... I say you and that greasy redskin attacked our scouts. I said, hold on. You try and make me. Go on, start something. You start it and I'll finish it. You're mighty anxious for trouble. I'll show you how anxious I am. Uh, Jake. You missed that swing, Jake. Don't start another. You ain't going to tell me what to do. I'll show you. Yes. Oh. Horse of that lifted him right off his feet. I'll show you. Hold it, Jake. You sure invited what you got. Yeah, but he... Now, don't reach for hardware, Jake. Or me and Vince will deal ourselves a hand. A yeah, good boy, Carrie. Now... What was that about Apaches? They're waiting for you in the valley ahead. They killed your scouts and tried to kill us. Likely story. Look here, Thorn. I know what the zombie's up to. You tried to make us change our course. I wasn't going to suggest that. If you'll keep going through the night, you can attack them around sunrise. Attack redskins? Apaches? If you camp for the night, you give those savages time to increase their strength. More Indians are coming to join them. So that's the game. You want us to go right ahead and attack them and be wiped out. 
And I suppose you'll split the loop with the Apaches. Haven't you had enough? That's his game, Thorne. Very well. Use your own judgment. You've been warned. Now, wait. Why wouldn't it be good sense to head south and go around those critters? What's the use of fighting them if you don't have to? I'm afraid, Thorne, if you change your course, the Indians will know about it. But how can they know? Do whatever you think best. You're the leader. Easy, Silver. <laughs> All right, Tonto. Uh, Come on, Silver. Hit him up. Come. Well, I'll be hogtied and thrown on my back. You see, Thorne, as soon as I called the turn on him, he was mighty anxious to get away. He didn't want you to change the course. He wanted us to attack right away. Uh, yeah, well, I... I don't see how the Apaches would know if he was to change your course. Do you, Vince? No, they wouldn't know it. Sure don't seem like a smart thing to ride right into a nest of savages. Some of us would be sure to get killed. I tell you, that masked man's working in cahoots with them. Well, we'll be guided by the majority. Let's turn south. Yeah, that's my vote. Well, south it is, boys. I know a trail. <laughs> Jake, you sure made a fool of yourself. Yeah, I'd like to have thrown lead at that hombre. I know his kind. You Easter men don't. I tell you, boys, he's bad. We turn south, then, that it? South it is, as soon as we start out in the morning. We might as well pitch camp here. Then we can tell the others why we were changing the course. You pass the word to break out the supplies and make camp. We're making camp! Haul the wagons to a circle! Make camp! <laughs> Lone Ranger and Tonto rode back to the mountain ridge where they could see the valley camp of the Apaches. It was well after dark when they arrived. The campfires of the Indians flickered like fireflies in the dusk as the masked man and his Indian friend crept stealthily to a place where they could watch. We'll camp here, Kimosabi, and watch those savages. More Apache join band. Yes, and there'll be more by the time the wagons cross these hills. You think wagon train come straight across? Well, I don't know. I don't think so. You leave wagon train plenty sudden. There was no way to make the leader believe I told the truth. Mm, that's right. We'll camp here and take turns standing guard. Uh. The wagons travel through the night to attack before the Indians are ready. We'll help in the attack. The Indians start toward the wagons. We'll ride ahead and give what warning we can. Let's make camp. <laughs> night advanced, more and more Apache savages came into the valley and camped. Fires were kept low, practically invisible, and the camp of the Indians was quiet. When it came Tonto's turn to watch, he knew that there was a white criminal directing the plans. The Indian build big fires, dance war dance, sing war songs, and give plenty warning. These fellas not do that. Sometime after midnight, Tonto saw one of the small glowing fires suddenly black out, and then another and another. He saw more activity in the moonlight and finally wakened the masked man. What is it, Kimosabe? You come. You take look. The Indians? Uh, are they attacking? They're getting ready to attack. Indian, get ready to move. To move? Uh, you look over this ridge. You see? Yes. They're leading the horses, packing their things. Plenty quick, all valley be empty. They're not moving because they're afraid. That's right. There go the leaders, heading south. Uh, south, Tonto. Ezra Thorne may have decided to take the wagon south. That's right. But if that's the case... How could the Indians know it? Uh, me not know. We'd have heard anyone who came from the wagons and went to the savages in their camp. Ah, uh, we hear if anyone come, but nobody come. Those red skins can be beaten. If they're taken by surprise, we... That silver... That arrow. From over there. Now, me see... They're savage. Oh, no, don't shoot. Charge them. Come on, Tonto. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. While the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched the Apache savages moving their camp toward the south, four redskins sneaked close in the darkness and missed their first shot with an arrow. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, instead of bringing their guns into play, charged to the shrubs, concealing the Indians in the battle with fists. Keep them from calling for help if you can, Tonto. Me try. Me stop that yell. Behind you. Me get him. The masked man's fist flailed thick and fast as the remaining Indians leaped to the attack. Knives and tomahawks were jarred loose from the savages' fingers as they reeled under the Lone Rangers and Tonto's smashing blows. Finally, the four savages lay prone upon the ground. Uh, that does it, Tonto. Uh, Tie him. Let me fix him. Gag them, too. Uh, let me do it. I'll fix these two. You take care of those. Uh, how them know we're here? That's what I'd like to know. How Injun get word? Why go south? Why come hunt for us? Uh, this'll hold him. Now for the others. If we were as savage as the Apaches, we wouldn't have to bother with the ropes. Uh, what we do with Redskins? Leave them here for the time being. We've got to keep an eye on the rest of the pack. Uh, we can ride south, keeping just this side of the ridge. We can look over the ridge from time to time and see if those Apaches make a new camp. Uh, we do that. You ready to start now? Just as soon as we saddle up. Daybreak found the pioneers breaking camp, loading their wagons, checking their weapons and ammunition, and preparing to start toward the southwest. As far as the eye could see, the prairie was free of savages, and Ezra Thorne felt an increasing relief that the wagon train had voted to follow Jake's instead of the masked man's advice. I'm glad we decided to head to the south. So am I, Ezra. I don't think much of the idea of looking for trouble. Uh, me neither. If we have to fight and there's no way to get around it, that's something different. But if a fight can be avoided, sakes alive, I say let's travel a hundred miles the other way if need be. Hey, uh, how you coming, Thorn? You about ready? We're ready when the rest are. How are the other folks doing? You been checking on them, Kerry? Well, they're set to shove on whenever we get the word. They know we're changing the course. Oh, sure. We had that out last night. Where's Jake? Looking over the map we drew up. There he is, sitting over yonder. Kerry, what do you think of him? Nothing. Why? What's Vince think? Oh, we ain't a right to think, Ezra. He's different than we are, but, well, maybe that's just because he's been out here so long. I guess the life out here hardens a man. Makes him ready to suspect everyone and fight at the drop of a hat. Well, I don't like him. Oh, Mary. Something about him. I don't know what it is. Well, climb aboard and we'll start out. Hey, folks, here's that extra duffel of mine. All right, Jake. Put it into the wagon. It's mighty helpful of you to tote some of my stuff. It's all right. The birds would get downright jiggled to death if they had to be tied to my saddle. I don't know why you lug them birds along. Well, a man gets lonesome living alone like I do most of the time when I don't have a job as guide. Well, I'll put the birds in the wagon. It's not right. Hmm? Doggone it all, Ezra. That man ain't the type one would look to have a passel of birds as pets. Well, maybe use them for fresh meat when the hunting ain't good. Well, I'll get aboard now. We'll start. <laughs> All right, Mary? I'm fine. Is everyone ready? Along there! <laughs> Far ahead on the ridge, the Lone Ranger and Tonto saw the savages making a new camp at daybreak. When they were sure the camp was to be settled, they turned their horses. Steady, boy, steady. There, that cinch is tight enough. Out of Tonto. Uh, we go back where we started from. Uh, Easy, big fella. Uh, why we go there? We can't leave those Indians tied. Why not? Because if we left them to starve, we'd be as cruel as they are. Oh. Uh, we're the only ones who know where they are, Kimosabe. From the fight that's coming, we're killed. Well, our engines kill us. I don't want the starvation of those prisoners on my mind. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Returning to the spot where they had left the four savages bound and gagged, the Lone Ranger and Tonto worked over the ropes which tied the Apaches so that they could easily escape in the event the masked man and his Indian friend were unable to return and release them. Ease the ropes just enough so the men can work themselves loose, Toto. Uh, me fix them, me fix... Kimosabe. Look down there. More Indians. Those fellas stay back when others go south. Just three of them and their horses. Uh, Why were they left there? Uh, me not know. They're looking this way. They know we're here. Uh, no, they not know. 
They wouldn't have been left to tell others where the band has gone. There's a trail that's easily followed. Why, Injun, look this way. They seem to be watching the sky. Bird up there. Yes. It looks like a pigeon. Why, Injun, watch it. Tonto, that bird has a message on its leg. You sure? We'll make sure. Use an arrow, Kimosabe. Oh, that long shot. We've got to get that bird. Taking a long, sinewy bow and an arrow from a sheath at scout side, Tonto fitted the feathered notch into the thin leather thong and carefully drew a bead on the bird, which was now winging swiftly overhead. For a tense moment, the arrow was poised on a line with the bird's flight. Then with a twang, the Indian's lean fingers launched it into the air, and the pointed shaft found its mark, bringing the bird to earth. Then they quickly examined the note attached to the pigeon's leg. This note explains everything. Mount up, Kimosabe. Easy, Silver. <laughs> We're riding to cut off those wagons. Huh? What note say? Jake signed it. He already has told the savages where the wagons will head. This note says they'll camp just east of the ridge tonight. That's the news those Apaches are waiting for. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Across the barren prairie toward the wagon train raced the powerful white stallion in the sturdy paint. Soon the familiar canvas covers of the prairie schooners were sighted, and the masked man signaled for Ezra to rein up. When the train had stopped, most of the men gathered around Ezra's wagon, and the lone ranger told them of the pigeon and its message to the Indians. You sure someone with us is working in cahoots with the redskins? Yes, I'll show him to you. Well, you'd, you'd better do us right away, mister. All right, there he is. That's a down right. Not so fast, Jake. All right, this time you're asking for gunplay. You'll get it. Look out, stop him! My head! My Look in his duffel. Back his bag, Tonto. Uh huh. Me do it. He sent word to the Indians when you changed your course. Sent word? How could he? I'll show you. He not find anything here. And it's somewhere on the back trail. He kept some of his stuff in our wagon. He has. Get it, Ezra. Hey, he's crazy. He's loco. You gonna take the word of a man that covers his face with a mask? We are. Till we've got reason not. He's trying to lead you into a trap. That's all. Here's the stuff he kept on the wagon. Unpack it. You've got no right to do you that. Keep you keep your mouth shut about rights, Jake. Why? Look here in this cage. Uh, that's just a pet of mine. You know how many pets he had when he first brought that pigeon cage here? Seems to me he had more than he's got now. He's released a couple of them. Bring the one we got, Tonto. Uh-huh. He get it. Haven't you heard of carrier pigeons? He's making it up out of whole cloth. Uh-huh. Take a look at this. A pigeon? Look at the message on the leg. Let me see that. Here, you take a look. We've already read the message. It's an Apache sign language. A narration. I can't read this sort of thing. It tells the Indians that you plan on camping just this side of the ridge tonight. Well, that's what we did plan. Who says thing? I don't know a thing about it. Maybe Ezra Thorne let that pigeon loose. Why, you... Now, listen to me. If I hadn't read that message, how would I know what you planned? Well, that's right. The only way the masked man could know would be by reading the message. Uh, Jake, it looks like you're proved a dirty, double-crossing, ornery crook. And if you still doubt me, fasten that message to another pigeon and release the bird. You'll see it fly on a beeline for the Indians. You'll see Indians who were left behind waiting for it. They'll get the message and take it to their new camp. Uh, should we let a bird go, gents? Why not? Uh, yes. now, let the Indians yes. think you're going to make camp. Let them attack. Now, look here, stranger. I like your style. I'm for taking orders from you. Can't we go back to the North Trail and avoid a fight? You've got a chance to wipe out those savages and make this country safer for the pioneers who will come after you. Let's do it. But the masked man says to make camp and let the redskins attack us. But you'll be ready for them. I'm all for it. Yeah, me too. Now wait, listen to me. He's you shut tra- your big trap, Jake. You're traveling the rest of the way with ropes on your hands. Come on, mister, take over and give us the orders. <laughs> That night, as the message to the Indians explained, the wagons were drawn into a circle on the east slope of the hills just below the ridge. As darkness closed in, there were many small campfires. The horses were inside the circle of wagons, and it appeared that everyone slept. Then, quite late at night, the air was suddenly split by a single sharp cry from a savage throat. Other savages took up the cry. Fast ponies broke into a mad dash. The attack flooded down the hill. Ponies, painted savages, spears, bows and arrows, war cries and screams of eagerness for blood and scalp, for looted firearms. And before the Indians could form their circle about the wagons, a score of rifles spoke as one. 
shattering volley dropped many of the savages in their tracks, sent the others reeling desperately in an effort to form a concentrated front. This was the beginning. Gunfire came from every rock and from behind every tree. It was a fire that nothing could withstand. Load them and we'll fire them. Pour it on hard. All right, gentlemen. There's another. All right. Skins broke in wild disorder. They broke and started back uphill for the safety of the valley beyond. Then new guns spoke, guns at the crest. The retreat had been cut off by men who were carefully placed for the Lone Ranger. Finally, sooner than anyone had hoped, the savages threw down their weapons and raised naked bronze arms high above their heads in token of surrender. Looks like your goose is cooked. Yeah. You can't prove anything. No? You've got nothing but the word of that mask man again. me. It's his word again mine. His word, what we saw, and the word of six captured redskins. If that don't stand in court when we get to the next town, then you'll be turned loose. But I reckon we got a plenty. You can hang, you ornery skunk. Hey, hold on, Ezra. There goes the mask man to his horse. Oh, wait a minute. Come here, mister. We want to show you how we appreciate what you've done for us. We'll meet again, Ezra. Good luck to you. Ready, fellow? Uh-huh. Come on, Silver. Hit him up. Come on. I'll Silver. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>